if you are tuning in for comedy, this isn't the post because I'm being dead serious tonight. I look like hell. We've been on the road all day long. It was a very, very long trip back to Illinois from West Virginia. Uh, when we left out of here on Thursday, all was well. We had purchased a box trailer to haul merchandise in because we had to get it back to Illinois somehow. And even though I own a Suburban, I couldn't fit all the merchandise in our vehicle with all the kids. So we thought, you know what, it's time to bite the bullet and purchase something that we can haul merchandise to these events in. So we did. We literally did not own this box trailer two hours when a, a, and you know what? If you are frail or sensitive, don't watch this video because I don't want to offend you by no means. But if you are easily offended, hang on with me because you're getting ready to get it. We were following an 18-wheeler down the road and it hit a deer which flew up and smacked into our vehicle. And when you are driving 70 miles an hour with a box trailer, you cannot swerve. So my husband had no choice but to hit the carnage, which splattered blood from one end of our Suburban to the other all over the trailer. It was a very dramatic moment. I wasn't paying attention to the road. I was actually on my phone. I wasn't driving, Gary was. I was actually looking at fishing charters for him. <laughs> when this happened, and all I know is we hit something, and I was like, what just happened? Gary was like, you know, I couldn't help it. I mean, the, the, the semi in front of us hit a deer, and, the, and, and it hit us. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I mean, I'm shook up. I'm tore up at this point. It was an accident. Accidents happen. So I'm like, we need to pull over and survey the damage, because when we ran over that deer, the box trailer, I know it jumped up two feet in the air. It was like a tornado was taking it off of our vehicle. We pull over, we survey the damage, and as far as we can tell, we just have a lot of leftovers on our vehicle. And yes, I was dramatic about it. I'm always dramatic. If you follow me and you love me, you know I'm dramatic. That's just how I roll. And I find comedy in everything. And I tried to find comedy in that, but some people didn't think it was funny. That's okay. So, we get back out on the road, we're okay, and next thing you know, we get an alert on our big spaceship computer screen in this vehicle that we have a flat tire. So, we're like, what the actual hell? So, we pull over, sure enough, we have a flat tire. We're trying to fix it with fix a flat, and I am trying to be helpful to my husband, and he is not taking it helpful whatsoever, because he's a country boy, and he's like, I have fought for our country. I am a veteran. I am a coal miner. I got this one out. And I'm YouTubing videos on how to change a flat because that's how I roll. I'm a woman. He's like, you don't need to do that. I got this. I was like, okay. So I tell him, I don't think you can put fix a flat in that tire because it has a green or blue cap on the tire nozzle because I had once heard that from somebody. I don't remember where. And he basically gives me that look like, you need to sit down somewhere and shut up. We all been there before with our husbands. So I do, but I'm, I'm supporting him. It's freaking cold outside. The wind is blowing. We are freezing. I'm chattering. I literally got in the suitcase and put two more hoodies on over top of the hoodie I had on to help my husband because he wasn't going to stand alone beside the road trying to fix a flat. We put air in the tire. It holds the air. And we like, let's... We limped across the ins entire state of Indiana. What should have been an eight-hour trip turned into like a 12-hour trip. It was a very stressful trip for me because I panicked. That's just who I am. And I'm not going to apologize for that because different people make the world go round. And I'm different. <laughs> so, finally, we get to Leavenworth, Indiana, and we're like, we have got to put the spare on the vehicle. So, we did. And that was a chore in itself. We had to dissect the entire back end of the Suburban to get out the tools to lower the spare and get the jack. And my husband was a trooper. He was. And I'm not even going to lie. While he was changing that flat, I was admiring his body. I was thinking, mm-hmm, boy, that's all mine. My husband's a hottie. I love him. He's hot. We get that changed. 
And let me just say, we was very disappointed in our 13-year-old son that he didn't even get out and offer any help because he was busy playing a game on his phone. But that's neither here nor there. It's here or there. It's kids nowadays, but whatever. We're not talking about that. We make it into West Virginia in the wee hours of the morning. And my parents are up waiting on us. They are. They're just like happy to see us, happy to see the kids. It was a great moment. We made it safe. Had a great weekend in West Virginia. We head back home. And it's... <laughs> We have, a, we have a great trip home until we had to witness a horrific accident on 64. I will never unsee what we saw that day. I was shook to the bone over what we witnessed. It made me evaluate every little decision, every little thing I've ever done in life and think, wow, life can leave you in a second. Get me gone. And, what's, and the aftermath is left. So my husband's driving. He's doing a great job driving. He's chauffeuring me currently. And I'm on Facebook and I'm looking at different people's posts. And all I'm seeing is horrible news. Babies dying. People getting killed in car accidents. People getting diagnosed with cancer. And I'm just like, you know what? I don't even feel deserving of the life I live. I really don't. I have been so blessed my entire life, regardless of what I've been through with prior marriages the struggles that I've had, they are nothing compared to what some people go through on a daily basis. And it made me feel guilty. But like I said, we witnessed something on 64 today that I will never forget. It was horrible. It was, it was horrendous. And that will stick with me until the day I die. And I just know that there's some mom out there tonight that is, is dying. She is suffering because she's lost her son. Possibly a wife, possibly kids. I don't know this man, but it was sad. It was very sad, but we made it home safe. All was well. We are home safe. I can't say that about everybody tonight, and I hate that. I do. I do. I hate it. Makes me feel very guilty, but I had shared a story the other day about a little boy that had stopped breathing. He didn't make it, so I'm tore up over that. I'm tore up over another story that I seen posted on Facebook. And my husband is just like, why do you look at the news? Why do you play into this? Because it's life. People are living this every day. And it's sad. It's so sad. And I'm shook. I get into it. I do. I read these stories. And before you know it, I'm creeping their family on Facebook. And I'm, I'm just heartbroken. And all the while, my husband's driving over here and he's mad at me because he's like, girl, quit looking at that. Quit reading. I know what you're doing over there. I know you on the news. I know you creeping their great-grandfather right now. And I'm like, you, you right, boy. You right, because that's who I am as a person. Uh, but like I said, this is not a comedy post. I try to keep everything upbeat, uplifting. When the world is falling apart around you, I try to get on here and do something funny, but tonight's not a funny night. Tonight is a Hold your children close, hold your family close, because tomorrow's not promised to anybody.